My name is Terry Odom, Charles E. and Emma H. Morrison Professor and Chair of the Department of Chemistry. I am delighted and proud to introduce George Whitesides for an honorary degree in science from Northwestern University. George is a Renaissance chemist. His early training as an organic chemist already showed signatures of his non-traditional approach to chemistry, where he combined mathematics from quantum science and nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy to understand how molecules could create new carbon-carbon bonds. This was only the beginning of his journey and strong influence on opening wide the gates of what could be counted as chemistry. He was an early pioneer of what I call chemistry plus, also known today as interdisciplinary research that builds on chemistry as the central science. What I find inspiring about George is that about every decade he follows his nose into new research directions. He is a serial innovator and entrepreneur. And remarkably, even despite these research shifts and their intrinsic challenges, his overall body of work is highly cited, impressively so. To better understand what I mean by George being a Renaissance chemist, I'll mention just a few of his seminal contributions. He pioneered surface chemistries that are influential in biosensing and molecular electronics. He invented a suite of fabrication tools known as soft lithography, that bring complex semiconductor processes to the benchtop. He recognized that polyvalent inhibitors could be used to block interactions in an entirely new approach for drug design. He invented low-cost diagnostic tools based on paper and microfluidics for developing world countries. And his current interests focus on soft robotics. Astoundingly, most of these fundamental concepts have been translated into companies. Chemistry Plus, indeed. While an expansionist in how he approaches and solves problems, George is a reductionist in message, both for himself and for others. Messages should be succinct and meaningful. He is known for asking incisive and frankly blunt questions. His ability to get to the heart of the matter makes you realize that yes, he has understood what you've said. And yes, he expects more from both speaker and subject matter. I have benefited enormously from trying to answer his seemingly innocuous questions. George has had tremendous influence on Northwestern. Many here who have trained with him are in leadership now and content, contribute to his legacy. He has also been an extraordinary supporter of one of Northwestern's hallmarks, our interdisciplinary research centers. Recognizing George Whitesides with an honorary degree is a boon for him and for Northwestern chemistry reinforcing that the chemistry of greatest impact is the chemistry that pushes boundaries while being broadly inclusive. I am honored and pleased to present him to receive this honorary degree. Welcome to the class of 2020. I would like to say that we are leaving you with a world in which everything is operating smoothly, but the fact of the matter is there are many interesting problems to be solved if you take climate, and global warming or cooling or climate change and unrest and government and all the other things that are going on, you've got a number of problems to solve. So Northwestern is a fabulous place and I thank the university and Terry Odom who made the nomination in the first place to, for their effort to allow me to accomplish this particular short discussion and to receive a degree. I'm very grateful. And I do think that Northwestern is one of the universities of the future. That is, you invent new things and then execute them to perfection and then go on to the next new thing. That's a wonderful combination of attributes which older and nostalgic universities may or may not be able to do. So in any event, what can I offer in the way of helpful remarks? And the only thing that I would say is don't stop because each of these interesting problems that you're faced with are problems that have the characteristic that they are going to continue for the foreseeable future. And the solutions will be partially technological. And since Northwestern is a technological university, you are exceptionally well qualified to deal with those problems. But there are also problems in public policy, in policy, in politics, in a number of other things. So to make very sure that when you're talking about these issues, you talk with your colleagues who are in areas that are not necessarily technological, since it may well be that the solutions to those problems are as much in areas that you're unfamiliar with 
as in areas that you're familiar with. So I was a chemist and I want to tell you a short story from how I became what is probably the most relevant feature of my career as a chemist. When I was young, young means just entering teenagers, teenage years, we had a garage, my family had a garage, and in the garage we kept the cars. But there was a side shed to the garage which had tires. And I had learned somewhere that tires have the characteristic that they're made of rubber. And when you melt rubber, it turns into a liquid and you can mold things out of it. And I thought that was very interesting and I couldn't imagine how that happened. So that one day I did an experiment, which is I took a tire and I took some gasoline out of the lawnmower and I put the gasoline inside the tire and I set the entire thing on fire. And it took a fair amount of effort on my part to set it on fire, but it did eventually burn. What I found was immediately interesting, which is that I couldn't put it out. And what happened in due course was that I more or less burned down the shed and part of the garage, fortunately not the car that was in it. But the thing that I really learned was that everyone thought this was perfectly normal behavior from an adolescent boy. And all of you are young, and so you are freely entitled to make mistakes and people will forgive you. Take full advantage of the fact that you're young and you can make mistakes and do it as much as you can, make mistakes because they're all instructive. And then you can go on and be an adult and move into middle age as you choose when you get there. But take advantage of the fact that you're young and you can do what you want to do and do it as frequently as possible. In my case, that was a key component of curiosity because it may well be that curiosity killed the cat. But for most people, curiosity just piques the interest in the world around them. So go ahead and do it and good luck to you and I wish you the best.